Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Market Forecast, brought to you by Options University. This is Butch Shorak. It's Monday, June 30th, 2014. Access to this video is for educational and informational purposes only. Nothing contained into this uh, video, website, or promotional material constitutes a promotion, recommendation, solicitation, or offer of any particular investment, security, or transaction. Options University provides educational services that are meant to teach you the risks and rewards of trading stocks and options, and we're not a service that tells you what to trade. We're not implying or guaranteeing any profit, and as always, do not trade with money that you cannot afford to lose. Let's take a look at the indexes during the last week and see exactly what kind of a split market we had as we look at the Dow, the NASDAQ, S&P 500, the Russell 2000 respectively. We see some negative numbers, we see some positive numbers. With that, the Dow down six tenths of a percent for the week. NASDAQ up seven tenths of a percent for the week with our split market. S&P 500 down one tenth of a percent. Russell 2000 down, uh, uh, I'm sorry, up one tenth of a percent. Make note that uh, the S&P was up two tenths of a percent in the last hour of trading Friday afternoon as we almost got back to that uh, flat line for the week. So let's take a look at our year to date as we see that what's happened since April is that the Dow up 1.7%. Uh, NASDAQ up 5.3%, S&P up 6.1%, leading all of the uh, indexes up year-to-date. And finally, the Russell 2000 up 2.2%. So as we've seen since April, the uh, Dow has advanced in six of the past eight weeks, but the total gain for the Dow, for example, has only been up 3.6% during that time. So well, as we look at what's happened, we've had our uh, summer run. We've gone through the month of June. The month of July is coming, and it'll be interesting to see what happens during the summer doldrums. Let's take a look and see exactly what uh, uh, um, uh, economic announcements we have coming for the next week. As we see on Monday, this uh, Chicago PMI coming out at 945, and pending home sales kicking out at about 10 o'clock on Monday. As we have this... Uh, week that is a short trading week. Uh, we see the PMI coming out at 945 on Tuesday and we have ISM coming out on 10 So we, and uh, construction spending coming out at 10 o'clock on Tuesday. So we've got a few announcements coming out this week, none of which will overcome what the Fed has done as the uh, Fed keeps fueling this uh, market rally during the summer here. On Wednesday we have ADP unemployment and factory orders coming out at 10 o'clock. On Thursday, every single Thursday, we have the employment numbers coming out at 8.30, international trade coming out at 8.30, jobless claims coming out at 8.30, and then finally, when we look at uh, ISM, we see that uh, ISM is coming out at 10 a.m. Notice the employment situation will give us last month's numbers, and then what will happen is that the jobless claims give us last week's numbers, giving us some kind of indication of where the uh, market will be. Uh, we have a shortened week this week as all markets are closed on Friday, July 4th to celebrate Independence Day. All right, let's take a look at the SPX and see exactly what our trend is. And looking at that trend, we see we're still in an uptrend with the 20 above the 30, with the, I'm sorry, with the 30 above the 50, um, which is still above the 200. So we've got a nice positive movement in the overall market. That taking place since basically the end of April, beginning in May. And we see a nice move up in the market. Things have kind of flattened out the last uh, seven, eight uh, uh, trading days, and we'll see what whether we pop up a little bit as we come into the month of July. Remember, uh, uh, the SPX showing us good strength leading the market uh, for the year. So with that thought, let's take a look at the Dow and see, well, in fact, first, let's go ahead and look at the SPX and see what the week actually looked like. And we see that basically flat for the week, didn't go anyplace, didn't do anything, sitting at the top of our uh, of our uh, Bollinger Bands. Looking at the Dow, we see that we had a bit of a pullback in the Dow as we pulled back to that 30-day moving average, hit there twice, rallied into the end, uh, uh, into the close as the uh, Dow uh, 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 basically uh, closed where it opened. Uh, with that thought in mind, now let's take a look at the uh, NASDAQ. Looking at the NASDAQ, we see that it uh, led uh, 
uh, this last week as it uh, ended up at the high of the week and showing us some good relative strength. Looking at the Russell 2000, we see that it did not make the high of the week, but still showing us good movements up as it had a very decent week. Uh, did have a pullback and then uh, moved on up into uh, almost the highs of the week. Russell certainly has made a big uh, comeback from where it was in April. Uh, took it a while to get going, but finally caught up. And then finally, let's look at the VIX. And as we would expect, this VIX is showing us absolutely no fear in the market whatsoever as we see the uh, VIX number at 11.26 uh, and certainly not showing us any big uh, fear in the market at this particular point. Even with a bit of a mixed market last week, we didn't get much out of the VIX. Bond market is kicked up and we've gone into some new highs in spite of the fact that the mortgage uh, levels are at the lowest that we've seen and uh, probably during our whole, whole lifetime. And we see the uh, bonds picking up a bit. Uh, looking at gold, uh, is there any big flight to safety? Well, we see a little bit move up in gold, but nothing much as far as showing us where things are uh, showing any big fear in the overall market. Still back 25 to 30 percent from our all-time highs. Uh, looking at SPY, what kind of volume did we have this week? Average volume coming out of the uh, uh, spider, so it didn't show us any great volume as the market went sideways, showing us this uh, complacency as we go into the month of July. We could uh, certainly get a little bit of a rally as uh, we get into the beginning of July, but remember, uh, we've got uh, uh, one of the worst quarters coming up, uh, July, August, and September. Uh, they uh, traditionally and historically have shown us a, a bit of weakness as we look at the market trends for our history. And finally, let's take a look at the financials, which were up slightly for the week. And we see that the financials uh, ended up uh, showing us uh, that it's still very near its highs. And uh, we'll see what our stocks did, uh, our financial stocks did, as we see the uh, financials uh, uh, showing us the stability at this particular point in the market. So with that thought, uh, taking a look at oil, we see oil as we come into the summer cycle uh, certainly uh, popped on up and is uh, trading near the highs of the past three months. So uh, for those of you that are gold members, stick around. Uh, we'll go through our stocks to watch as we have had a basically flat week in the market with a bit of a mixed market. And for those of you that like to see more free videos, go to uh, www.optionsuniversity.com forward slash free gold. And with that thought, thank you for attending Market Forecast, brought to you by Options University. This is Butch Shorak. It's Monday, June 23rd, uh, June 30th, uh, 2014. Thank you all for being here.